Hey, welcome back to the Pen Hut. This is Tommy again. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to talk about something that actually just came up recently, and I was trying to think of like where I fit into that. Um, basically, it's um, the collector versus the user, um, and kind of how you acquire uh, fountain pens, and, and you know what is your purpose, or kind of like how how are you going along in your journey? So, um, I think. A lot of us, when we start out, you know, we get a couple pens, we get really excited, and uh, we want to just try out all kinds of different pens because we know immediately that they all look different, right? They all have different nibs. Uh, they're all going to have um, different uh, feel as well, you know, different materials, build quality, different weights, different lengths. Um, they're just going to feel very different and very unique. Uh, so I know, at least for myself, uh, I started with uh, Lamy, Safaris, um, Kawakos, uh, Pilot Metropolitan. And then from there, I kind of just branched uh, upwards, I guess, in price on the familiar brands that, that I knew. And did a lot of research on a lot of other things, too, um, but kind of stayed with the, the safe choices there. Um, but eventually you do you do start looking at, at reviews, you start looking at uh, things online and, and you realize that there are so many other options, uh, and even in the same price point, uh, that might not be available uh, at a store near you. Um, or maybe you do find a store near you that you never knew existed. But either way, there's a lot of other brands and other models that you know aren't super available. So you do have to go online, you have to look at reviews, and you have to see like what's available. So... That's kind of like what happened with me is uh, then I started venturing out to um, a couple other brands like Sailor, um, some of the higher end pilots. Um, I think I tried a Conklin at one point, um, tried uh, Edison, uh, I don't know, I'm drawing a blank, but uh, Parker's, uh, Schaefer's, uh, just a bunch of different type of pens just to see what they're all about because uh, it's very different holding one, very different to see a photo, and very different to actually write with one. Um, so that kind of led me to the whole collecting thing. So I, I do have a little bit of a tendency to collect things because they're interesting and you want to have variety. Um, usually I'm not the type to collect like a whole set of something, like all the different varieties of something. Um, but I will... I'm probably a little bit closer to having one of everything almost um, where you're like, okay, I have a Lamy Safari that I like, nice color. Okay, cool. Let's move on to something else with another color or something. Um, I don't, I've never really found a need or felt the need, sorry, to have multiples of the same uh, pen. But I think that's where the conundrum happened the past few weeks. Uh, I've been noticing how much I like uh, my Sailor, how much I like my Edison Collier, how much I like the uh, Parker 51. Um, I believe I have two more Parker 51s on their way, and um, I do have a Parker 51 uh, Demi that, uh, that I have as well. And just something about them, like they're just, you know, they're just nice. Um, now, there's obviously different price points on all of those. Um, but another thing that I was thinking about is vintage pens, like why are vintage pens um, so talked about um, at pen shows um, on different forums. Obviously, you're going to get people talking about you know, the newest and greatest, whatever the special edition is of the year, things like that. Um, but those seem to have a little bit of an excitement for like a short period of time. And then when the next model comes out or the next color comes out, everybody's talking about the new thing. Um, and that's, you know. I guess part of the trend is that you want to get the newest version of something, the newest color of something as it comes out. And that's pretty much in anything um, that you buy, whether a car, a cell phone, anything. If there's a newer model, you know, it's going to pique your interest if, if you like that kind of thing. Um, but it had me thinking because I went to a pen meetup this past weekend and I noticed that pretty much everybody had vintage pens. Um, there were a few modern pens here and there. And the same thing when I went to a pen show last year, um, the majority of the pens that were on display were vintage pens. And it had me thinking like, why is that? I mean, are they better? Um, are they better quality? Or are they trying to sell them because there's their higher value maybe? Um, and I had a lot of ideas on why that is, but I think it goes back to why people get into fountain pens in the first place. It's, it's an older, 
uh, writing instrument or older style that you know eventually got dwarfed out by uh, ball points, roller balls, things like that. But I think there's a lot of history in pens. Um, a lot of pens actually fell or um, you know came about during different uh, historic parts of history um, that really made them stand out. You know that's why they were iconic. Um, like the Parker Dual Fold uh, Big Red is a big one they've been making for, for decades. Um, and, it, you know, they're still highly regarded nowadays, like the new ones. But you really can't compare a newer version versus, versus one from before the 90s or even a special edition or limited edition from back then. Like, just everything is so different about them. So I guess the more that I'm researching about vintage pens, the more that I'm actually understanding, because I think before I didn't really understand a lot of it because there's just so much out there, so many different models, or maybe their factory moved overseas and then the quality became different, the materials became different, just so many different things um, happened and just so much to catch up on. Um, I was a little lost. Um, but now that I'm thinking about it, you know, I go to flea markets, I try to find some some nice vintage pens and, and try them out and, and then I'm slowly starting to appreciate vintage pens a little bit better and I think the vintage pens part um, seems to me like a little bit um, more natural to collect um, because they don't make them anymore you know they're more scarce so if you find one that you really like you're like you know what maybe I can find this other color um, or this other nib size or Maybe I can find one in better condition. Um, let me see what I can do. So it kind of makes you want to go out and seek them versus the new models. Uh, you basically just have to go to one of the big 10 or 12 retailers and most likely they'll have it. Um, or you can buy it, find it on Amazon or eBay and just find something, look at it and click it and you're good. Um, it's all about availability uh, in that case and you know what to expect. Uh, versus vintage pens, there's there's so many factors. You know, you might be able to find one really inexpensive. Um, somebody didn't really know what they had, and they just you need to sell it. Um, or you can find some that um, are very expensive because they were very well taken care of, never really written with, uh, and there might have been a special edition or limited edition at one point. Um, so it's kind of neat. You know, like the more that I'm learning about pens. I feel like the more it's actually gearing me to do that research and to find those vintage uh, models out there and perhaps get multiples, you know, um, like I said, they don't make them anymore. So whatever's on the market is whatever there is, even if there, you know, tons of quantities of them, like the Parker 51, there's so many different versions, but there's thousands of them out there. Um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, hey, you know what, I want to get one with a gold cap that's maroon. Um, that writes extremely smooth, um, does that and the other thing, that you'll be able to just go and find one. Because um, you'll, you'll find a lot that, are, that that meet those requirements, but maybe somebody didn't take care of the nib and it's all scratchy, or maybe has a lot of things to it, or maybe you need to find one that needs a little bit more repair to get it at a lower price point. Um, or maybe you don't want to repair because you don't want to deal with those hassles, so you're actually going out and looking for a pristine, uh, maybe uh, what is it called old new stock or new sorry new old stock um, but whatever the case is uh, you do have to search for them you do have to know what you're looking for and know when you see it or you find it and know what the price range might be so you can you know get a fair price so basically what I'm getting at is like I said I think I think I do have collector tendencies in a lot of ways and I live to to get a variety of things um, but I'm getting to the point where some of my pens I don't use them as much uh, some of them are so readily available even if they're a higher price point that I'm like you know what I don't know if I should have bought that you know I could I can kind of buy that whenever um, you know if I didn't spend the money on this pen here could I have maybe found two or three vintage pens that are unique, um, maybe spend a little bit more than I normally would to find the exact one that I want in the right condition that I want. Um, so I'm kind of at, at that point where I'm thinking about it. Um, so I'm trying to make a, a little rule for myself of a little case that I showed before where I have my pens. It's uh, three, three drawers, a uh, total of 30 pens. Uh, I'm thinking maybe 
um, start getting into a little bit more of the vintage pens, maybe have the top two uh, modern pens and then the third drawer uh, vintage pens. Um, and then whatever it is that I decide to collect more of, maybe that will change. Maybe two drawers will be vintage and one will be modern. Who knows? Um, but that's why this is a journey. You have to really find out what it is that you like. Um, for me, I actually do write with the pen, so I want something that writes really smoothly. I want something that feels really comfortable in the hand, something that's not super heavy, something most likely that's not metal, at least on the suction, because I don't like the feel of that, um, and something that has a really good balance. Um, I don't need something that that has like a ton of ink capacity because I don't really write extensively like that, so that's not a problem for me. Um, but I want to get something that is relatively easy to clean or maintain because I know there are some some vintage pens require a lot of work to, to clean out because they're very complicated um, and although that's fine that's not the first thing I want to be looking for but I'm pretty sure I'm going to get some variety in, in some of my pens as well so get some vacuumatics or get some regular cartridge converters whatever um, I feel like I'm in like stage two of my uh, fountain pen collection um, where I'm trying to get a little bit more specific on my likes, but also venture more into vintage pens. And I think for a lot of people, it's very, um, very scary because um, you don't really know what you have until you have it, especially if you're ordering online. Um, so definitely going to pen shows, uh, looking at other people's collections in, in real life, getting a feel for different pens, I think is really important. And, um, I'm very lucky that I can do that and I can, you know, try out different pens here and there um, and then get a good idea for, for what I'm getting. So kind of excited, um, kind of rambled on there, but basically I am a collector, um, kind of reserved collector, I would say, because um, I do, I am conscious of cost and, 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 and everything else, but I also want to have a collection of pens that I know that I will use and that I will appreciate the pens and... I have no problem grabbing any one of them, pick it up and write with it and know that it's going to write very nicely for me. So I don't know, hopefully uh, I'll be picking up some more vintage pens uh, and in the future I might do like quick overviews on things that I have um, and then you guys can share as well. But let me know in the comments underneath uh, if you're more of a collector and you like collecting, uh, you know, batches of specific pens or specific brands. Or maybe you have a specific color that you love and all your pens are a specific color. I'd love to have a little batch of something, but don't know which color I prefer yet. Um, but let me know how you uh, put together your collection. Um, did you organize it? Was it random? Or do you just get something that's pretty? Or whatever. Let me know how you, how you collect. And if you're a user, let me know what kind of pens that you own you prefer using the most. Thanks for watching.